What's up, sports fans? This is the Lucas Ross Sports Channel. It's time to continue my 2023 college football schedule previews slash projected records for the upcoming 2023 college football season. And we continue them with the Tennessee Volunteers. There was a schedule last year for the Tennessee Volunteers. You see the overall record for this team was 11-2 overall, 10-2 in the regular season. First off, looking at who they played in the non-conference last year, Ball State, um, Pittsburgh on the road, Akron, and then UT Martin. Their toughest non-conference game last year, of course, that Pittsburgh game ended up being a seven-point win for this Tennessee team. Ended up in being in overtime, and it was back and forth the whole way, and Tennessee ended up winning that one on the road. And you look at who they played in the SEC West. They played LSU on the road, and then, of course, Alabama, which they play Alabama every year. And that LSU game turned out to not be even close. Uh, Tennessee went on the road and really just hammered LSU's defense in that game. And Tennessee pretty much, you know, dominated that game from the start. And then Alabama, that was probably the game of the year last year. Um, it still pretty much is. And, you know, also the pretty much the game of the year in the SEC Conference as well. And, yeah, Tennessee had a pretty good season last year. Um, first time Alabama or Tennessee beat Alabama in a long time, and that was probably, like I said, their biggest win in the 2022 season. And after that win against um, Alabama, this this Tennessee team proved that they are legit a college football playoff contender. But you look at the last, but you look at November, they had a pretty tough time in November. Um, they lost to Georgia on the road. And they lost to South Carolina on the road. Uh, Georgia was just a couple touchdown loss, but. You know, they just could not move the football on that Georgia defense because they were better by that time. And then South Carolina, they the defense got hammered in that game. Probably one of the worst games I think Tennessee played all year um, from last year. And Tennessee now heading into 2023. Once again, high expectations. They went to a New Year's Six Bowl, won that game against Clemson. Um, they lost Hendon Hooker um, pretty much close to the end of the season. He is now gone into the NFL draft. Jalen Hyde also gone. And you also got Cedric Tillman gone as well. But they also have to replace some guys on the defensive side of the ball, especially guys like Jalen McCollum. Um, you also got Trayvon Flowers gone, Jeremy Banks gone, and also Byron Young gone. So you got you, you lose a, quite a bit on that defensive side of the ball. But, you know, Tennessee, I'm not really too concerned about the offense heading into 2023. What's Joe Milton going to do? Pretty much the starting quarterback job is going to be pretty big next year for this Tennessee team because they have an incoming freshman coming in as well. So, yeah, Tennessee now still high expectations heading into 2023. Let's look at the schedule now for this team heading into 2023. And you look at who they play in the non-conference. They'll play Virginia, Austin P, UTSA, and UConn. Virginia's a pretty interesting game. This one will be a neutral site game in Nashville. Kind of like a home game for Tennessee because it is in Nashville, Tennessee. But I think Tennessee, I think this will be an interesting non-conference test for Tennessee. Virginia wasn't that good last year, but, you know, they could make this game a little bit interesting. But I think Tennessee will probably be favorites, even though it's in Nashville. It's also a neutral site game. And from where Tennessee was last year, they're definitely going to be some favorites heading into some of these games pretty much this season. And then they'll play Austin P here on set from the ninth. Austin P, like I said, going to be a you know team that you know just doesn't compete at all. This is an easy cupcake game for Tennessee. UTSA. This was an 11 um, win Group of Five team from last year. I should say a non-conference team. Um, this was pretty much an 11 win team from last year, and they could make this non-conference matchup pretty interesting and maybe give Tennessee a scare, perhaps. I mean, you just never know what can happen, but I think Tennessee will still be favorites heading into that game as well. Then UConn here, this is a game. This is a team actually that went to a bowl game last year, and this is a pretty interesting non-conference game for Tennessee, but I think they'll still be probably big favorites even though UConn was a bowl team last year. But like I said, this is just based off of how the teams were from last year. So when you look at who Tennessee will play outside of the SEC East, we know they're going to be playing every SEC East team. They'll play Texas A&M here on October the 14th. And then, of course, the, there's that matchup with Alabama on October the 21st. They play Alabama every year, so that's no surprise. Uh, Texas A&M didn't really have a good season last year. Maybe they were better this season. And like I said, it's going to come down to the quarterback position for this Texas A&M team. Can they get good quarterback play and make this game interesting against this Tennessee team? I think either either way, it's going to be a pretty interesting matchup here. 
um, out of the SEC West, or actually the, out of the SEC East for this Tennessee team. So now let's go game by game here, preview the schedule. So Tennessee will pretty much play Virginia here on Centrum the second. Um, that's an interesting non-conference game, like I just mentioned. Um, this game will be in Nashville. And then they'll play Austin P here on Centrum the ninth. So they'll have two non-conference games to kick it off in the season. And then they'll play Florida here on the road on September the 16th. Going to be a tough place to play once again for Tennessee at the Swamp. Um, Tennessee beat Florida last year. We don't really know what Florida's roster is going to look like, and it's really early pretty much, you know, to be doing these projected records because we just don't, want the, don't know what the rosters are going to look like yet. But Anthony Richardson gone for Florida. But they have a transfer quarterback coming in from Wisconsin. He could probably help them out a little bit, get that veteran-type ex um, experience a little bit. Um, Florida was a decent team last year, but they really weren't, weren't good enough to, you know, um, compete in the SEC East for like an SEC championship, you know, contention as well. So they'll play that game on September the 16th. Then they'll play UTSA here on September the 23rd. And like I said, that's an interesting non-conference game because UTSA was an 11-win team last year. And then Tennessee after that will play South Carolina here at home. South Carolina um, beat them last year. At, at South Carolina Stadium, revenge-type game here for Tennessee. Uh, Spencer Rattler coming back for South Carolina, so that's the big issue um, for Tennessee in this game. Pressure Spencer Rattler. I mean, they really couldn't pressure him last year. Maybe that will be the key this season, perhaps. But like I said, it's pretty early. Maybe if Spencer Rattler stays healthy, um, that could be an interesting matchup there between South Carolina and Tennessee. And every time when South Carolina and Tennessee step out on the field, it's always an interesting matchup. It's a back-and-forth game every time. And then Tennessee will get a bye week after that game. They'll play Texas A&M here on October the 14th. And that, like I said, it's a game that could probably be even close. Um, you know, Tennessee um, has a new quarterback. Texas A&M probably will have a new quarterback as well. But they bring back a lot of talent from last year. And they were a 5-7 and seven team last year, but they could be a really big, te better team this season. And then they'll play on the road at Alabama on October the 21st. Tennessee beat Alabama last year. Alabama going to be a little bit different. They're going to lose Bryce Young at quarterback, Will Anderson on the defensive side. So, yeah, both of these teams have a lot to replace on both sides of the ball. They're going to both have different quarterbacks, maybe in the starting lineup. Question is, who will Alabama's be, um, starting quarterback be? And then Kentucky here on October the 28th on the road. So you got back-to-back -back road games here against um, Alabama and Kentucky, which are interesting tests. Um, Tennessee beat Kentucky pretty badly last year. Um, it was a blowout in that game. Could that be the case this year? I think Kentucky could probably keep this game close. Devin Larry coming in over from NC State probably uses that veteran experience type quarterback leadership. But I think Tennessee will probably be favorites in this game. Kentucky was an, was an all right team last year. They weren't really that good. Uh, UConn here on November the 4th. Then Missouri here on the road. Um, in the last two matchups, Tennessee has dominated this Missouri team, especially against their defense. They have scored 60-plus points in this matchup. Missouri got pretty better down the stretch from last year. Um, could they make it happen this year, make this game a little bit more interesting? And then Tennessee will play against Georgia here on November the 18th. And like I said, with Georgia's projected record video, one of the first videos I did in this projected record series, I think this is a game that Tennessee could probably pull off an upset. Like, Maybe Tennessee, maybe Tennessee has a pretty good shot to beat Georgia considering it is a home game and Georgia's got to replace somebody at re replace Stinson Bennett at quarterback. But they just got a lot of talent on both sides of the ball. But like I said with Georgia's video, Tennessee's or Georgia's toughest test of the year will be on the road at Tennessee. And that's probably going to be their one of their games that they could probably lose. But, you know, Tennessee probably will be a heavy underdog heading into this game. You never know. That's a big time matchup there on November the 18th. And then they'll end things out here on November the 24th, or actually the 25th against Vanderbilt, a Vanderbilt team that was pretty decent last year, but they missed out on a bowl game. And I, don't, I just don't think Vanderbilt's going to be all that talented this year. I don't know what the roster is going to look like just yet for Vanderbilt. I'm pretty sure they can probably, you know, make this a competitive ball game, but you never know. It is a rival game and all, but I think Tennessee, from where they were last year, this Vanderbilt team, it pretty much blew them out. So that's the schedule for Tennessee. Let's now give you the um, odds here, the percentages where Tennessee will be favored or maybe an underdog here. And this is the scale I've been pretty much using so far throughout these projections. If it's a 1% game, Tennessee will be a three-touchdown underdog. 20% games, about a couple touchdown underdog. 40% games, these where Tennessee will be about a touchdown underdog. 
and for 50% games, these are going to go either way. Like 50-50 games, these are games where I think Tennessee or maybe some other opponent, this is a game where I think pretty much that can go either way. For Tennessee, for 60% games in the purple, um, these will be games where I think Tennessee will be about a, about a touchdown favorite. Um, just about seven, eight points, somewhere in that range. 80% games, Tennessee will be favored by about a couple touchdowns. And then 90% games, these are where Tennessee is going to be favored by a lot. So we're going to start with those games. The green games here at 90%. And we're going to start with these three games here, the non-conference matchups. Um, Austin P here on September the 9th, UTSA September 23rd. And then you got UConn here on November the 4th. Austin P. that's an easy pretty much win there. UTSA, like I said, it's going to be a pretty interesting matchup. Maybe that game's probably in the 90% category. It's not over 99% perhaps. And then UConn, the same thing right there. I think that game will be about a 90% game. Not over 99% though because, you know, both of those teams were pretty good last year. The Both of them went to a bowl game. Austin P. though, I think is pretty much at 99%. I really don't see Austin P. competing at all against this Tennessee team. So, yeah, I think Tennessee are pretty big favorites heading into these games. Um, three out of their four non-conference games will pretty much be in the green as of right now. And then we go to the games now where Tennessee is going to be about a couple touchdowns. That's in the blue. And I only got one game on that schedule. It's Vanderbilt here on November the 25th. I think this is the only game I see Tennessee just being a couple touchdown favorites because the rest of their schedule is pretty tough. You never know what can happen in those games. Um, Vanderbilt, though, I really think they still have a long way to go before being a really big SEC team. But, you know, Vanderbilt hasn't really been good in the last few years, and Tennessee's just dominated this rivalry. But it's a rival game. Just never know what can happen. But I think Tennessee will be big-time favorites, like a couple touchdown favorites, not in the green game. But I probably would have put this one in the green probably, but I think Tennessee pretty much will be about a couple touchdown favorites because it is a rival game. You just never know what can happen. We now go to the games where I think Tennessee is going to be favored just by about a touchdown and it's in the 60% category here in the purple. And that's almost the majority of their schedule. It's Virginia here on September the 2nd in Nashville, Texas A&M here on October the 14th, Kentucky on the road, and then Missouri on the road. So, yeah, Virginia right there in the purple. I mean, it's, you know, just based off of where the teams were last year. I can't put this one as a 50-50 game because of how Virginia finished last year in the season. Uh, they went 3-8 and eight overall, so I can't put this one in the white. Texas A&M, I know they went 5-7 and seven last year, but I think they should be better um, probably this time of the year. I, if this was probably, you know, if this was on the road for Tennessee, I would probably put it in the 50-50 game. But as of right now, I'm going to put it as a touchdown favorite for Tennessee because they have home field advantage. Kentucky on the road. This is another game that I probably could have put in the 50-50 games. But, you know, from the matchup last year and also from Kentucky's record last year, I can't put it in the 50-50 game. So I think Tennessee will be about a touchdown favorite against their rival Kentucky here on the road. And then Missouri here on November the 11th. I put this one in the purple. If this was a home game for Tennessee, I would probably put it in the blue just because of how last year's matchup went. I'm going to put Tennessee here as a touchdown favorite because it is on the road at Missouri. And like I said, Missouri got better down the stretch, and I think this is clearly a touchdown favorite, though, for Tennessee. But, you know, they've scored 60 points in the last two matchups, so will that be the case this year? We now go to the games where Tennessee is going to be about an underdog in. I don't have any 1% or 20% games, but I do have some yellow games at the 40% mark. And I just got two of those games on the schedule, and that's on the road at Alabama and then Georgia here at home. Now, I think Tennessee will be underdogs in this game. I think they will be clearly underdogs in this one, about a touchdown underdog. Alabama's pretty tough because it is on the road because it is at Bryant-Denny Stadium, one of the toughest places to play. If Tennessee was going to have this game at home once again this year, I would probably put it in the 50-50 game because they beat them last year. But I'm going to stick with it and put it in the yellow. Now for the Georgia game, I put this one here as an underdog because it is a home game for Tennessee. If this was on the road again for Tennessee, I would probably put it in the orange. But as of right now, I'm going to put, put Tennessee as a touchdown underdog against this Georgia team. So those are pretty much, you know, my yellow games, Alabama on the road and Georgia here at home. And I think the two games here on the rest of the schedule, it, on Florida on the road and South Carolina here at home are 50-50 games, games that I think that can go either way. And maybe they win one out of those two games. Let's say they lose to Florida 
and they beat South Carolina here at home. So, yeah, I mean, that could happen, but maybe they beat both of those teams. Maybe they can probably finish out pretty good at, good at 10-2 and two once again. And, you know, maybe they can probably win both of those games. But what if, what if they beat Florida and lose to South Carolina at home? So that would be pretty interesting to see where Tennessee can probably beat them. But I think these are clearly 50-50 games. I think Florida on the road is pretty tough to call because Florida wasn't, you know, Florida was a decent team last year, but they weren't really that good enough. And South Carolina, they beat Tennessee last year, so i got to put this one in the 50-50 game category. So if you look at this schedule and also look at the games that Tennessee is favored in and also their underdogs in like Alabama and Georgia and also the games that are pretty much 50-50 games, the overall projected record for this Tennessee team in 2023 is going to come out to be 9-3 and for 2023 for the Tennessee Volunteers. Like I said, they could lose pretty much, you know, both of those games between Florida and South Carolina. But what if, let's say they win one out of those two games. Maybe it's Florida, they beat them, and then they lose to South Carolina. But maybe they lose to Florida, and then they beat South Carolina in the next game. So that's how it pretty much came out. And they'll be pretty much underdogs heading into the Alabama and Georgia game as of right now. So the 9-3 and overall projected record for this Tennessee team. What really concerns me about Tennessee this year is the defense. I think that if they can get good defensive play, this team has what it takes to maybe reach a college football playoff in 2023 but Tennessee will be a top 10 team heading into next year there's no question about it so but that's my overall projected record for this Tennessee team nine and three for 2023 and give me your thoughts on this projected record down in the comments below and stay tuned here for more sports content on the Lucas Ross Sports Channel